Hello there, and welcome to Kono's Crash Course. This is week 26, and we will be covering Henry VIII and Bloody Mary. Let's get started. I'm just kidding, I'm not doing that to you. I'm good. Yeah, alright, let's go. <clears throat> so, the base of this whole lecture is goes back to 1348, when the Black Plague first invaded. People began questioning God's protection over them, and they searched old manuscripts for the answers, but I guess they didn't find any. And this event was the motivation for the English Bible to be made, to know the real truth. The church thought that only they could give that kind of knowledge, though. Now let's jump to the actual beginning of this lecture, which is Henry the Seventh, not the Eighth yet, the Seventh. So yeah, remember Henry the Seventh. This guy lived in the 1500s and was the English king during the Hundred Years' War, which if you remember was a big battle between England and France. Henry the Seventh wanted to ally with Spain as their army and funds were growing due to the success of the expeditions of Christopher Columbus, who you don't need to know, but I mean, I'm guessing you already know him. His plan was to have his son Arthur marry the Spanish princess Catherine of Aragon, and know that both those people. She was the daughter of Ferdinand and Isabella, who were the king and queen of Spain who sent Columbus on his expedition. Aragon was a district in Spain, and so yeah, they got married, and then four and a half months after this marriage, Arthur gets sick from a virus and dies. No, not Arthur. I love Arthur. F in the chat for Arthur. So yeah, um, the marriage was annulled because they never... Uh, and after that, she married Henry the Seventh's other son, Henry the Eighth. This is the Eighth. His dad was the Seventh. So yeah, I know the difference. The rest of this lecture will be on Henry the Eighth. So if I ever say Henry, I'm referring to the Eighth. Now, Catherine and Henry were actually together for seven years before the marriage because the annulment process was really slow. So they, I don't know, they just decided to go ahead and get together while they were getting the mar their marriage was getting annulled. Eventually, they got married and were together for 24 years. But sadly, their babies always died early, and so they had trouble getting an heir. And then finally, they did have a child, and it was Mary the First, who later got the nickname Bloody Mary. And now, instead of being happy for this child, Henry was very disappointed. Because he wanted a male heir, you know, someone to be the next king. And then he started getting nervous that Catherine wouldn't have a son. And also, around this time, he gets many mistresses. He had 50 crosses across the country where he met up with them. And he had many illegitimate kids with them that were never recorded in any books. So, we really don't know who any of these kids were or how many of them there actually existed. One of these mistresses was Mary Boleyn, who you don't need to know. Um, their relationship didn't work out, and so Henry VIII decided to move on to her younger sister, Anne Boleyn. This is who you need to know. She refused the offer from Henry VIII and told him, I'm quoting here, to bed me, wed me. Uh, fortunately, it's easy to remember that since it rhymes. Ugh. Now, Henry VIII was one of those guys where if you told him no to something, he would just want it more. So he became obsessed with getting Anne. And this is also when the sack of Rome happened, um, if you remember that from last week's lecture. So the Vatican Council with the Pope and all that stuff was in a state of chaos, and it took some time to fix it all back together. So Henry VIII used this time to try to file a divorce with Catherine of Aragon. But the church still would not allow it even in their disrupted state, and Henry's time to get a divorce became shorter and shorter as time went on. Henry hired Thomas Wolseley to find a way for this divorce to happen, but he was unsuccessful as the church said there was just no grounds for it. And so then, as a replacement, Henry hired Thomas More, who is the main character in the book we're reading right now. And he was given Wolseley's job, so basically, yeah, he was to find a way to make the divorce happen. The two were originally buddies, but More was a very moral man and would not allow this divorce to happen. He resigned the position later, and this made Henry VIII really mad. Yeah, why can't I get what I want? Eventually, Anne got pregnant, and this complicated things, because this marriage had to happen fast in this case, but I'm just confused, though. If she got pregnant... Well, what was even the point of what she said earlier? Isn't she just going back on everything she said? But Oh, well, I'm not going to question it. So yeah, he decided to just forget the church and go ahead with this divorce. Divorcing Catherine and marrying Anne. He wanted to do it, so he was just going to do it. He made his own church. He, he actually did. He made the English church now. And it was all based around a book by William Tyndale named The Obedience of a Christian Man. Know the author, know the book. Now, Tyndale wrote many books during his life, but his main effort was towards the English Bible with a proper word ordering. 
And so Anne showed this book, The Obedience of a Christian Man, to Henry one day because it said that in his country, the king had more power than the church and the pope. And of course, Henry VIII liked this concept, and so he made it the foundation of his church and used it to justify his actions. Also, a year after the marriage, Catherine of Aragon died. Many thought Henry poisoned her, but modern medicine magic shows it was actually a form of heart cancer. And so later, Anne had a daughter named Elizabeth I know her. And this frustrated Henry because he wants a male heir, not another girl there. So he had Anne executed. Seriously! Ugh! You went through all the trouble to get the divorce and the marriage, and then you just, woof, you just executed her just like that, just because she's starving and she's done so. These people are stupid. Well, looks like it's time for a new wife. So Henry VIII married Jane Seymour two weeks after Anne was executed. He didn't have to go through with the church and all that stuff, because at this point, he was the church, so he didn't have to get approval or anything for this. Also, the official church excommunicated Henry after this, but he didn't care because he has his own church now. The next year, Jane had a son for Henry named Edward VI. Yes, a sweet victory for Henry! But she died a couple weeks later due to birth problems. Time for a new wife! But before we get into this new wife, some notable stuff happens. First off, Henry VIII authorizes Tyndale's English Bible to be used in the English church. He funded for its printing and had it chained to every pulpit. And this was mainly used as a way to separate it from the main church. He's just like, hey, look at there, Mr. Fancy Church. Look, my church has got the English Bible. You don't got that. Ha! Also, he had Thomas Kramer hired as the Archbishop of Canterbury. Know this dude. He supported the Reformation ideas and taught Edward VI. He probably wrote a book called The Book of Common Prayer. Uh, Dr. T never really said what this book was, but I would assume that it was a book of uh, common prayers. Is, is that a good guess? Anyway, apparently the English church still uses it today, so good for them. Now back to Henry's new wife. Number four is Anne of Cleves. Nothing notable happens here. They just get an old six months later, so. Time for a new wife. Number five is Catherine Howard. And a year after their marriage, he discovers that she's been playing around, which he deems unacceptable, <laughs> even though he did the same thing. <laughs> so this led to her beheadment. Time for a new wife. Oh boy, why would anyone in the right mind marry this lunatic? Uh... Anyway, number six is Catherine Parr. She must have been incredible. She was actually the last wife because she outlived Henry VIII. He died in 1547, so she didn't actually have a very terrible end to her life. Good for her. Next in line for the throne was the beloved son, Edward VI. He had a Protestant mindset due to Thomas Cramer's teachings, and he implemented these ideas throughout the country. Then he died six years later, and next in the line for the throne is the Forgotten Mary I, the Forgotten Bloody Mary. This was Catherine of Aragon's daughter, and she was an avid Catholic and wished to reverse all the Protestantism in the country. She burned 300 Protestants as a sign of this commitment, including Thomas Cramer. That, that's dark. But then she dies. I don't know how or when. She just dies the end and next on the throne is anne boleyn's daughter elizabeth the first more on her next week but apparently she had a long reign she supported the reformation and died in 1603 but that's just some general details you'll learn more about her next week so <clears throat> well that's the end leave any relevant comments in the comments below thanks for watching and i'll see you next week Hey guys, so I'm actually adding this in. I didn't have this in my original script, so yeah, um, I'm just going to cut straight to it. So I just heard of a really great way to remember how each of Henry's six wives died if you're having trouble with it, and then just remember that he had six wives. So here it is. Divorced, beheaded, died. Divorced, beheaded, survived. I think that's actually really good. So yeah, if you want to use that, uh, there you go. Um, I didn't think of that idea, but yeah, it was really good, so I'm using it. So you know who you are who gave me that idea. Thank you.